Good evening, Lizzie boys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm not feeling very good, but I still want to make a video, so this is one that I've been putting off making for a while just because I didn't really want to do it, but now I'm thinking about it, and it sounds like a pretty fun idea. So, what is the idea? My top five favorite Monster High G1 lines. I specify G1 because, you know, I might do this with G2 or G3 somewhere down the line. But today we're going to be counting down my top five lines from G1. And just to keep things neat, I'm not going to include any basic release lines, such as Campus Stroll, which introduced us to Nephra, Operetta, and Torlai, or the basic Monster High dolls, the original ghouls. We're just not going to include any of those. We're strictly going to stick to themed lines and not so much introductions of new characters, just because I don't feel like that's fair. So, yeah. With that, let us begin. So last minute, I did decide to make this list a top seven. <laughs> so we're actually going to be starting with seventh place. And in seventh place, we have the full haunted line. I originally debated whether or not I wanted to include the getting ghostly dolls because I did kind of just want to devote it to the new four characters. But then I remembered the criteria that I set for this list, and we're just going to bend the rules here. I know that this is the basic releases for them, but if I include the getting ghostly dolls in this too, then I'm technically following my own rules. So, just go with it. The haunted line is absolutely stunning, and I'm sorry for how goofy some of these pictures are going to be. Um, I was too lazy to compile the stock photos myself, so I'm just using a couple pictures off of Google, and yeah. Overall, the haunted line is just so good. All of the dolls look amazing in their ghostly forms. All of the characters got a uh, customized skin tone for this doll to make them like partially translucent, and it's the coolest thing in the world. When you put them next to one of their normal dolls where they're not in ghost form, the difference is night and day. They even altered Spectra. They didn't even have to do that because Spectra was already a ghost. But to make her fit with everyone else, instead of giving her the partially see-through limbs, like usually her hands are, her hands and feet are see-through, right? They just gave her this pearlescent skin tone to make her match with everyone else. I think that it's cool, all the differences, all the like stops they pulled to make these dolls look different from the way they usually do. They're in ghost form and the way they look should reflect that. I think one of the only dolls who doesn't look that different from the way they usually do is Twyla. Her skin tone stayed pretty much the same. Like, you could swap her arm with any other Twyla and you probably wouldn't be able to tell. But if you swapped, say, Claudine, like one of her, like her getting ghostly doll with any other Claudine doll, you would be able to tell that she has the wrong arm on. It's the same for Draculaura, Rochelle, Rochelle especially, and for Spectra. But with Twyla, I just don't think that they made that big of a difference with her. Which is a little disappointing, but the line overall is still a hit. And the four new characters they introduced. This is my favorite lineup of like new Monster High characters that they ever made. Vandala, Kiyomi, River. Mm, those three are so good. I even like Porter. Like, I didn't leave him out to be petty or anything. I unironically like Porter. He's a fun character. I would wear his shirt if they made that for humans. They should make that shirt for humans. I would wear the shit out of it. I love buttoned-up shirts. <laughs> Overall, these three, four, these four are just a really good line. Vandala was one of my grail dolls for a while. And to this day, I still would like to own a second one of her in the box because I've only ever owned one. And it's the one that my aunt got me for Christmas one year, which was the year that she came out. <laughs> As for Kiyomi, mm. I cannot begin to describe how much I love Kiyomi. I started using her for the Abbey's World series, and over time I just- she developed into one of my all-time favorite characters for no reason. God, her design is so good. Like, the concept of making a Japanese faceless ghost into a monster is so- it's just so cool! They started to get more creative towards the end with the monster types. I know some people say they were like grasping at straws for ideas, but- I think that they were getting more creative, honestly. And River. Oh my god, we were so robbed in some aspects with River. Because originally she was supposed to have a pixie cut. She was supposed to have like a skull inside of her head that you could see. And she was supposed to have like this bird. 
that had its skeleton visible on the inside, too. But the final doll did still turn out really cool. River was one of my favorites for a while. She's just so cute. Making the daughter of the Grim Reaper look so colorful and cutesy was such a good idea. And as I mentioned, Porter's pretty cool. He's got big fluffy hair. I would wear his shirt. And yeah, overall, the Haunted Line's a hit. I love every single doll from it, so had to include it. So they're in seventh place. Up next in sixth place, which I did want to put this line higher, but ugh, it feels like a crime to put this line this low, but I really can't fit it anywhere else, is the I Heart fashion line. These dolls were so good. Oh my god. Every single one of these dolls was on my wish list at some point, and I'm lucky enough to own them all now. This line, I don't know why it started, but as it continued, it became an excuse to introduce the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive ghouls to store shelves. Starting with, with, um, I almost called her Spectra, with Scara. Scara's I Heart Fashion Doll was so well done. Frankie, Abby, Claudine, those three were still done amazingly as well. And every doll in this line, I've tried to get new in box just because I want to have all of their pieces. Most of the time when I buy a Monster High doll secondhand, I don't care if they're like fully complete or not as long as they have all their outfit pieces and all their jewelry pieces. That's the primary thing I concern myself with. But with these dolls, I actually want to make sure I'm getting everything down to the littlest bracelet. With other lines, I don't find myself caring that much, but with iHeart Fashion, I absolutely do. My favorite dolls from the line overall are probably Abby, Claudine, Cleo, and Widona. Yeah, definitely Widona. I waited so long for Widona to finally drop in stores, and when she did, my mom's friend, who knew I was a big collector, ended up buying her for me to give for her, my mom, to give to me. It was so sweet. I was so moved by his act of kindness. This Widona was seriously one of my favorite dolls of all time, and she still is. I still absolutely adore her. Iris was another one I waited a long time for because I was a very big Iris fan. Venus, oh my god. They did such an amazing job with Venus. Like, honestly, if she wins the Fang vote, I don't think the collector doll they're going to give her is going to outshine this release. I honest to god don't. This doll is just too good. She's got a checkerboard print going on her side shave. She has black rooted under her hair. It's so good. They played into the goth, grungy look so well. And then, of course, we've got Wisp. While she was, unfortunately, the most underwhelming, in my opinion, I do still honestly really love this doll. They did a great job with her design, and I love her a lot. And finally, we get to Cleo. Oh, this Cleo is so, so pretty. I finally did manage to get her after a few years, but mine is extremely incomplete, I only have the doll and her bodysuit. I was missing one of her hands as well, so I had to replace her hand. But regardless, I'm grateful to have the doll at all. Uh, I ended up getting her in a trade with someone, and that's one of the best trades I ever made. So in short, the I Heart Fashion line is nothing short of iconic, and every single doll released under the name just outdid themselves. I would love to see something like this return for G3, and so far it has, but it just doesn't hit the same way. Hopefully going forward they can like rectify that and make it feel more like iHeart fashion, but for now I'm unsure. Regardless, putting this line in 6th place feels criminal, but it's the only place I could fit it. Starting us off in 5th place, we have the Power Ghouls line. All of the dolls in this line just they did it for me. <laughs> I wasn't even big into superheroes when this line came out. I was like a little kid. I didn't really care about Marvel or DC or any superheroes for that matter. Quirky, I know. But I did become a nerd and get into superheroes when I was older, so maybe that made me love this line a bit more. But when I was younger, this line really drew me in. And this was actually my first Torawai, so maybe this line just holds a very special place in my heart for that reason. But I just really love what they did with the characters here, and it was so much fun. The little comic books all of them came with were such a fun read. And of course, the line isn't complete without talking about Widona and Gulia as Miss Steadfast, which were both Comic Con exclusives, but you don't have a full set without them. I love all six dolls in this line. 
And even the packaging was strong. Like, Toralai's package was so good that for years I had held on to it. I don't know why I threw it out. I used to save all of my Toralai boxes. But then one day I just said, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to throw all my Toralai boxes away. And I still regret it to this day. But this packaging was so good. I just absolutely love how everything's got those little black dots on it like comic books tend to have. It's just so good. The packaging was amazing. The dolls looked great. Gulia is probably one of the most iconic Comic-Con exclusives, even though Widona does trump her in my opinion. I just much prefer Widona. This line was great, and I can't really find a single flaw with any of them. Although, pretty much every Torlai and Claudine I've ever held in my hands tend to be extremely wonky. So, that's one thing, but you know, that's just what you could expect from G1 Monster High back in the day. Regardless, this line is amazing, and I think it deserves fifth place. Next up, in fourth place, we have the school's outline. I just want to tell you guys that I am excluding Abby and Spectra, as well as Claude, when I'm talking about this, because unfortunately those three dolls do count as basics, and I am primarily referring to the characters' new outfits in this line. I just think that this line did an amazing job with the new characters, no, with the characters' new outfits. Draculaura's Forbidden Love Fit is one of my favorites. I actually have two of her because of how much I like this doll. Um, School's Out Cleo took me forever to get because I always wanted to find one with perfect bangs. And when I finally did it, I was never happier to hold a doll in my hands for the first time. Frankie took me a couple years to get as well. I absolutely love this Frankie. My Claudine is still incomplete, but I have two of her, so eh, you know, I'm happy with her. And Laguna was the only one from this line that I managed to get new in box. I somehow got her for 25 bucks on eBay in a bid. I, I don't know why I thought I was actually getting her, but I did. So, that was fun. I don't know why I unboxed her, but I at least kept the box. This line is just really good, and I definitely think it deserves a place on the main list. And overall, <laughs> this is probably some of the best looks for the characters that we ever got. Although, obviously not top tier since this is only fourth place, but you can't make one of these lists and not include School is Out. It's just such a good line. Up next in third place, and this has been getting very difficult to narrow down because I am realizing just how many Monster High lines I absolutely adore, but this one had to be on the list somewhere, so I picked third place for it. We have Freak Du Chic. Um, the only picture I could find of the dolls together without making one myself was this ancient stock photo using their original prototypes. Goliope's definitely a prototype, at least. Something about her looks off. So, this line was really cool at the time, and it's one of the few that I actually rushed to buy all the dolls while they were still in stores. Although, I didn't get all of them while they were still in stores, because for some reason, it took me a- No, I got her at the store. I got Twyla at the store as well. It was Claudine. I didn't get her in stores for some reason. I just need to tell you guys how dumb I am real quick. I found her in stores on sale for seven bucks. And you know what my stupid ass did? I didn't buy her because there was a little black speck on her nose. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Child me needs to, needed to be slapped, honestly. I did some stupid decisions while I was at the stores, but... I did end up getting this Claudine later down the line. She just cost me $33 more than I was hoping to pay. By that, I mean I should have gotten her for seven bucks back then. Anyway, the Freak to Chic line is honestly amazing. I actually keep one of them in my room. Honey has stayed in my room since I got her. I don't know why. She just hangs out in here. You can see her right now. Let me pick up my camera. She just hangs out in my bedroom. I, I don't know why she's here but I'm not opposed to it. Did you know Honey Swamp and I share a birthday? So overall, this line is just amazing. I even like Goliope, and I usually don't like big, huge dolls like her, but they just did so many cool things with her, such as putting a little horse from a carousel on the heels of her shoes. <laughs> Monster High shoes were so good. Frankie still has one of my favorite sh pairs of shoes. Actually, no, Claudine. I mixed up their boots. Claudine has the really cool boots. Twyla's stilts were so cool. I do wish that they had made Twyla grayscale too to match with Claudine, because this was like sort of like a noir second wave of the line, 
but they only committed to the grayscale with Claudine and not Twyla. It would have been cool to see both of them in full grayscale, but whatever, can't change the past. Rochelle, on the other hand, is a really cool line and line playset. <laughs> she came with a really cool playset, and I really like having her. And the artwork for this line. I picked Twyla's because it's like one of my absolute favorites. God, this era of Monster High art was so good. And yeah, overall, the Freak to Chic line is one of my favorites, and this list would not have been complete without me putting it on there. Up next in second place, we actually have a bit of a tie. This tie is between Gloom and Bloom and Sweet Screams. These two lines. Both are lines that I missed out on while they were in stores. And by missed out, I mean I was too stupid and too cheap to buy them while they were on shelves for such affordable prices. Not very unlike what they cost now. The Gloom and Bloom line was probably the one that I slept on the most. I at least considered buying Frankie and Draculaura the first time I saw them at Target. I didn't even bat an eye the one and only time that I ever saw Cleo and Jennifer in stores. I just walked right past them. I looked at them. And I kept going. Biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> it ended up taking me, I think, like five or six years to get my hands on Jennifer. And I only got her this year. Okay, if the line came out in 2015, it took me seven years to get Jennifer. <laughs> like, was it because I'm a cheap bastard? Yes. But it, I did get a really good deal. I ended up getting her in a lot of ten dolls for a hundred bucks, so I only paid ten bucks for her. So, you know, I did score. But I'm still without Cleo because these dolls ended up getting so expensive. It's really annoying. I wish that I'd bought Cleo sooner. But overall, this line is fabulous and sweet screams. I'm very glad that I ended up prioritizing this line on my list and getting them while I still could. Um, I remember it was uh, my friend Zombie Corn who helped me find Frankie. He sent me an eBay listing where she was on sale for $11. I've never been more grateful to anyone. <laughs> oh my god, that was the best price I could have paid for her. I got my Draculaura for like 25 bucks on Mercari, and once again, that was a good move on my decision. I got Abby and Ghoulia new in box. I did unbox them myself, and these boxes were so good. The Sweet Screams artwork, the packaging, everything about these dolls was so well done that I just had to put them on the list. But you guys will soon see why these two lines had to duke it out for second place, while the first place didn't even have to try. The first place line is just that good. So... With that, with that said, um, let's just let's just do it. <laughs> By the way, we are skipping honorable mentions. Um, I really like other Monster Eye lines too, but I kind of just wanted to highlight my favorites here, like my number one to seven favorites, I guess. I I don't know why I picked such an odd scaling system, but I did. <laughs> so, yeah, let's um, let's get on to number one. And with that, we have seventh place. 6th place, 5th place, 4th place, 3rd place, 2nd place, and finally, in 1st place, we have Dawn of the Dance. The Dawn of the Dance line. My god. Oh my god, I don't even know why this is my number one favorite line, but it is. I just cannot get over how much I love these dolls. They're all so good. Every single one of these designs is so much fun. They all look so different from each other, yet the line is so cohesive. This is one of the only collections that I display together on my shelves. You guys know that I usually just break dolls up, I put them wherever I think that they'll look best. I just, I don't ever care to display my dolls in like a series collection together. This is the only line that is the exception to that on any one of my shelves. I display all seven Dawn of the Dance dolls together because I love this line that much. This is probably the line that I've spent the most money on completing. Don't just, I just need you guys to know though that I didn't like spend like a thousand dollars on this collection or anything. I think I spent at most like a hundred. I've been in this for a really long time. I think I, f I made a video 
when I finally completed Dawn of the Dance. And I would have to check when I uploaded that. But I have been a very happy, very big fan of Dawn of the Dance for years. And, oh my god, this collection is just so good. Yeah, I made a video about it like four years ago when I completed the line. So, I've had this line complete on my shelf since 2018. That's pretty cool. Uh, most of them I did actually find at the flea market. Well, not most, more like half of the line. Somebody had donated all three of these dolls to my flea market guy, and I bought two of them. I bought Draculaura without shoes, and I only just got her other heel this year, so she's been Cinderella missing the glass slipper for a year for years now. But, oh uh, my god, it's just so nice to me knowing that I finally have the line complete. Like, do I have everyone's purses? No, but I have the line complete enough to a point that I'm happy with. My Frankie and Laguna are reproductions from 2015. 14. I don't have the originals, but everyone else is original. Deuce is, without a doubt, my favorite Deuce of all time, the Deuce from this line. And this Gulia is just beyond stunning. All the dolls in this line are hits. Not a single one would ever... I could see all of these dolls being in my top 20 Monster High dolls of all time. They're all just that good. So, yeah... <laughs> With that long-winded explanation out of the way, in short, I like this line a lot, and I think it is, without a doubt, my number one favorite Monster High line of all time. And with that, we've done it. I've talked about my, my seven top Monster High lines of all time. Obviously, there are other lines I would have loved to include on this list. Like, if I had made it a top ten, you definitely would have seen um, Ghoul's Rule on this list, without a doubt. I think I might have included... Actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ghoul's Rule definitely would have been on this list if I had made it a top 10. I'm just not sure what the other two would have been. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to let me know if you'd like me to make any more top 10, top 5, whatever videos in the future. I'm always open to suggestions. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.